Welcome back to Fox 43 AM Live. Joining us now is Curtis Sneedon, Topeka Chamber of Commerce President. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm really good. I'm excited that you're here today. Um, so many things are going on in Topeka, and you guys have a lot, a lot of plans coming up, and I'm definitely excited to hear about it, more of them. So, like, the first thing, I hear that do you guys have like a bill to allow Topeka, the Topeka flag to get on the car's license plates? You bet. So in 2019 or so, our young professionals group called Forge launched a program to uh, design a new flag for our community. It was a very kind of open-ended, you know, public take part mm -hmm. sort of process. They, they then brought in some professional designers to hone the, the best designs down and a, and a design was selected. You see it all over town yes, now on people's I, shirts I, and caps. I've and, really come to like the design. Yeah. I remember when it first happened, there was, there's, change is always a little bit of pushback, but I think Topeka is really kind of coming to that new flag. It's a point of pride for uh, our community and especially for some of those younger professionals. So we've taken uh, the initiative this session, thanks to our own Senator Christian O'Shea, uh, to introduce a bill that will make it possible for drivers when they register f to renew their uh, license plates to acquire a Topeka license plate. They'll actually look uh, something like this. Hey, you can see. So uh, I think this will be a, a real point of pride for folks here in Topeka. You know, we're in the business of economic development and we're learning more all the time that economic development isn't just bringing business here. It's about making Topeka the sort of place people want to move mm -hmm. to and are proud to live in. And this is a uh, part of helping us achieve that. That's absolutely wonderful. I might have to get a real one of those. I'm I love sorry, seeing my Katie. I didn't print one up for you. <laughs> my, I'm sad. <laughs> we have one that says cocaine cat back at the office. But <laughs> No, Katie. But no, Katie. It's the struggles of having our names, uh, <laughs> rare names everywhere. <laughs> so also going on, um, guys are kind of looking into child care and helping parents out there get better child care or just more of it, really. Well, what all goes into that? It's an amazingly, surprisingly complex issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I think parents have known for... Uh, all along, yeah, that finding the childcare time is a almost. challenge. But uh, really, since the pandemic, uh, the business community has awakened to the fact that the the lack of a sufficient supply of childcare, we'll say slots. <laughs> It sounds a little, you know, detached because there are lovable kiddos, mm -hmm. but you know, available places to put put your kid during the day. There aren't enough of them. In fact, there are about five thousand more kiddos in Shawnee County alone than there are slots wow. for them mm -hmm. to, to fit in. That is a material impediment to, to parents getting back into the workplace and that makes it a full-on business issue for groups like the Chamber of Commerce. It is our top legislative priority. What's the solution? Well it doesn't, this is a, an issue that doesn't sort of lend itself to an easy Flip the yeah, switch I would feel and like now there's we not one it. good solution right. for everybody. There are a lot of different angles here. They I include probably some changes in policy at the state level. They also include probably changes in the way uh, employers and daycare providers maybe relate with one another and collaborate in, in new ways so that we can try to bring more daycare um, you know, slots onto the marketplace. So as far as the legislature is concerned, Again, uh, Senator O'Shea uh, helped introduce a bill that we are very supportive of that would provide a, a $2,000 income tax um, credit to individuals who work in daycare. Daycare is, ironically, among the most critical industries we've got, if mm -hmm. you think about yes. it. Yes. I mean, if you just stop and pause, where are we putting our kids during the day? What could be more important than that? Exactly. And yet, it is historically a pretty tough business to make a profit in, and it doesn't tend to pay very well. Mm. There's something to solve for there, and this bill doesn't solve that, but it, it helps. It's by definitely a step in the right direction. Yeah, so, so that tax credit is, is a good opportunity. Um, there are also a, a range of ideas about uh, changing up some of the licensing regulations to see if we can't uh, you know, tweak the dials a little bit in such a way that it's um, you know, easier to profitably provide daycare, critical service, obviously without uh, changing up the, the safety and welfare of, of our kiddos. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, it's a delicate process. It's complicated, and uh, we are charging ahead to try to find the right mosaic of, of solutions. I, I wish you the best of luck solving that one. And you know, one more thing that I almost I want to talk almost the rest of the show about this. It's my, my favorite kind of legislation that's popping up that I've heard about, the mm -hmm. common consumption areas. You guys are trying to change it to where people can potentially leave the bar with their drink in hand. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for areas in Topeka and what can that end up looking like in the future? Well, it goes back to the whole premise of needing to make Topeka the sort of community that people, especially young, talented professionals, uh, want to move to. The vision would Here's a scene that you could that you could use as your vision. So say you're in Noto, mm -hmm. and you buy a, a beer at, at the Norseman, and there's a jazz band playing down the street at Serendipity or some other venue. Once these common consumption areas are put into place, you would be able to legally, you know, buy your drink at the Norseman and then just stroll down the street and listen to that band, uh, or maybe stroll to Redwood Park. The same could be true downtown. Maybe you would uh, buy a beer, say, at the Iron Rail or the Pennant, and uh, stroll down and listen to a great show or a speaker of some sort at Evergy Plaza. That's the vision. Obviously, the devil is in the details. The state passed some legislation a couple of years ago that. Uh, enables that concept, but we realized pretty quickly that it needed to be tweaked mm -hmm. a little bit to really be workable. So the bill that we're trying to pass this year, uh, you could say fixes that, and assuming we have success, then we ought to be well on our way to trying to establish some of these areas around town that, that will make it possible for you know, responsible adult adults to enjoy all our city has to offer. I'm definitely excited for that. I'm excited for the potential that it could create for just more walking areas and, you know, it's like, again, just the growth of the city. I'm Absolutely. super excited. And I can't wait to, for the development of the legislation and just to talk to you more about it in the future. Very good, sir. Well, Curtis, well, thank you so much for joining us today. This has truly been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>